So if you're coming to Virginia Beach and you don't want one of those older 50s, 60s compartmentalized style houses, you want a modern open floor plan, newer house. But because there aren't too many new construction houses in a lot of Virginia Beach, you're gonna find some other newer options that check all the boxes. Open floor plan, a bunch of different size houses, a real nice neighborhood, meticulous neighborhood, also the in-demand school districts that you would also want. Well, today we're gonna to be talking about Courthouse Estates, one of the most in-demand neighborhoods in Virginia Beach. Courthouse Estates is an awesome neighborhood, but I've had a love-hate relationship with Courthouse Estates. I have had some issues with it in the past. We'll talk about those uh, later in the video. First, we'll look on the map and I'll show you where Courthouse Estates is. So if you see on the map, this is zooming out, you'll find there's Virginia Beach on the side right here. Well, Virginia Beach, again, has a lot of suburbs, town, downtown, town center, but also the country part of Virginia Beach is down in the Pungo area. Well, just to the west of Pungo, it's not very far away. You see this whole section right here? This is Courthouse Estates right here. So if you zoom in further, you see that all these little neighborhoods, there are 15 little communities that are packed in a kind of a, a circle. And just below Indian River Road, down at the very bottom, there's one village also across the street called Augusta Village, which is one of the uh, villages in Cornhouse Estates too. And these are all considered villages, 15 villages in Cornhouse Estates, with over 1,100 houses in the neighborhood. All these neighborhoods are relatively similar. You'll see that they have some, some differences, but they're all relatively similar as far as when they were built, uh, what the style of the house is, it's more contemporary. And so if you go into any of these neighborhoods, you'll find, generally speaking, that there are enough floor plans that have enough variety that you can have some options to pick from. And then where is it in relation to the rest of the area? Well, you'll see it's connected to a couple primary roads, North Landing Road right here on the north part of it, and then Indian River Road on the, on the south part. These connect one, one way into the country. You're not too, like you're a few minutes away from Pungo, but you're also going towards the central part of Virginia Beach, headed towards Indian River Road, towards Kempsville, and uh, that whole Kempsville Providence uh, towards the 64 interstate over there. But then over at North Landing, you can take that and go up to, towards Salem. Salem High School is not too far away. And also towards Independence and also towards the north part of Virginia Beach. So you have an ability, as you're in, in Cornhouse Estates, you can go out into all four different directions, all connected to the neighborhood itself. So you can go out on the north side, you can go out on the south side. So take that and also know that you're in the corner of Virginia Beach. So you're close to the country, you're close to the suburban and country line. But even though you're in that section, because you have so many roads out that lead out, you have the ability to go to other parts of the city pretty easily. So let's take a look at the houses in here. Now, I, I mentioned these houses are very contemporary. They've got that, you know, that open floor plan, big windows on the first and second floor, which also is pretty uncommon or hard to find. You've got rooms that kind of flow into other rooms. They're not as compartmentalized as you'll see in a lot of the houses in the 80s and the 70s and the 60s in Virginia Beach. But most of these were built anywhere between like 1995, 96, into like 98, 99. You'll see a few sprinkled in there in the 2000, 2001, 2002 range, but majority of them are gonna be late 90s. So you'll find that that's right at the beginning of when it became more of a contemporary style house that was most, most popular uh, in the area. You'll see a lot of these, most of them will be vinyl siding, but you'll also see some with brick fronts, but most of them are gonna be vinyl siding. And within the neighborhoods of Courthouse Estate, you'll find that there are some common areas as well, because this is in an HOA. You'll see a few that are three bedroom, maybe like even 14, 1500 square feet, but most of them are going to be four bedroom or five bedroom, anywhere from 18 to 2,000 square feet up to 30 to 3,500 square feet. And uh, so if you want a bigger house and that open floor plan, this is a place I would consider. Now the prices. So currently you'll find a lot of these houses are going to be listed anywhere from the 475 range or 500 up to six to 650. You'll see some push over that, but most of these are going to be anywhere from like the five, 515 up to like 575 to 600. That's where you'll find most of these houses. Now higher price houses as well fall in those Southern uh, neighborhoods, Augusta, Shenandoah, and Madison villages those have the highest concentration of houses, $600,000 and over. Now, the common themes as to the ones that are over 600 and 625, they, a lot of them will have pools, uh, and a lot of them will also be maybe brick-facing. But that being said, they're also probably mostly all redone inside. So you can get a house that's maybe, you know, a dated kind of a fixer upper that maybe ends in the 475 range, or you can get pushed to a newer one, more renovated in the 575, 600 to 650 range. Now these lots in here aren't very big, but anywhere in that like quarter of an acre ish uh, range, not very big. And the backyards aren't very big either. 
But every once in a while, you'll find one that's on the corner lot, backed up to woods that might be anywhere from like the third of an acre, maybe up to even a half an acre or more. And that's also what can push that value up on some of these houses as well. I'll tell you a quick story about how the prices have increased in this area and why I was concerned about this neighborhood. Well, back in 2020, 2021, and 2022, some of the most in-demand houses in the neighborhood, it was like the epicenter of the type of house that a lot of people wanted. And some of these houses that hit the market in the, uh, the 2020 to 2022 range were some of the nicest ones in the neighborhoods. Those got pushed up really high. There was one in 2021 that got pushed up to about just that $600,000. There was nothing even close to that uh, in 2021 in Cordas Estates. And so you could see that there was a demand for that neighborhood. And I, I was watching it happen. And I started thinking, is it really getting too aggressive? Is the, are the prices in Cordas Estates getting too high? Is this going to be like an overinflated neighborhood uh, for appreciation going forward? Well, I was watching it over the last year or two, and I was expecting a little bit more of a cool off in the neighborhood. But in the last year or two, you're still seeing houses sell about to me the same, the same current rate as what you'll find in other neighborhoods. You're going to see how some houses that are sitting for like 20, 30 days. A lot of those are going to be ones that they might think that because it's courthouse estates, I can just throw a house up on the market in, in any condition and it sells and then it sits. Or it could be in that 625, 650 uh, or, or more range and they're just trying to push it too hard. So I will say that the the trajectory hasn't been as fast as it, as it was 2021, 22. That's the way it's been for every part of the area. So I can't really say now, uh, as I'm thinking about it, that this neighborhood performed any differently than to me, the rest of the, the area. And in my opinion, now that I've seen what's happened since the 2021, 22 time period, I'm more bullish. I'm more interested on, in Cornelius Estates as it from an investment perspective, because it's sustained the demand of that time period. And it's still selling at a price that's pretty compelling. You'll also find as you go through the neighborhoods that almost every neighborhood has a pond that some of the houses back up to. There also is a well, walking trail that goes right through the middle of the neighborhood. One of the cool things I like about Courthouse Estates is the amounts of trees in the neighborhood, even though the houses are kind of that newer style that you don't see a bunch of trees in often. They focus a lot on the vibe of the neighborhood as you drive through the trees or lining the streets. And they do a good job of making you feel like you're in the country in a bunch of horse pastures because of how the, the fences look and how the trees are and how relaxed the neighborhoods feel. Another benefit to living in Cross Estates is the school district. I've had many people want to move to the North Landing Elementary School District, and there aren't too many houses in the neighbor, in the area that feed into North Landing Elementary. This one's the largest neighborhood, I think, that feeds into that, that elementary school. So if you want North Landing, and if you look online, you'll see some pretty solid reviews from North Landing. This neighborhood is in that elementary school. And then also Lansdowne Middle and Kellum High School, which is also very close to Courthouse Estates also. So you're close to the high school, close, very close to the, the uh, elementary school. You're just right next to the neighborhood. It's awesome access for schools if you're moving to the area for schools. So if you do want open floor plans and you want that five to 600 price range, I definitely think that Cross the States is a good idea. However, there are some drawbacks, some significant ones that for me, there are some of the reasons why I would be very cautious to get a house in Cross the States. It doesn't mean it's a total don't, but be just be very aware. Number one is going to be that you got to know when these houses were built. They were built in the late 90s. What does that mean? Well, as we're, as we're videoing this, this is 2024, and you'll find that we're entering into the time where a lot of the major systems in the houses were, are going to need to be replaced. Now, some of these may have already been replaced. You know, four or five, six years ago, you know, the windows may not have been touched in a lot of these places. The HVAC systems may might have been original. The roofs, maybe the water heaters, these types of systems that can be five, 10, 15, $20,000 uh, to, to replace, they all may have been coming to an end to needing to be replaced at the same time. So if you bought a house that was built in 98, you know, in 2020, that's right at that line where you're like, I might need to do a lot of work to the house that might not lead to as much appreciation as I'd want. And so you might be paying 500 for a house, but you might be paying an extra 30, $40,000 that you didn't plan for. So that's one thing to be aware of. But there are some houses, now that we're going into the 2024 into 2025 and beyond, some of those these houses that have those older systems may have had, had replacements done. So now you're starting to see that turnover. So just be aware that, that, is, that we're in that time period of the ages of these houses where you might need to still be a, a watchful of when these systems might need to be replaced. That's number one. Number two is going to be that these are on slabs. I say they all, a vast majority of the houses are on slabs, except for three villages, Augusta Village, Shenandoah Village, and Madison Village right here. The rest of them will be 
almost 100% on slabs. Now, some people prefer slabs over crawl spaces, but the problem with slabs is gonna be plumbing. If you have issues with plumbing, if you do have to uh, jackhammer the slab, that can be quite annoying and quite invasive. Number two is that, well, if you have a slab, that means you don't have a crawl space. Well, a crawl space has space underneath the house. That space allows for things like ductwork to be put in underneath the house, which means that you don't have to put the ductwork in the house for HVAC system. Well, if you have your slab, that HVAC ductwork can't be put underneath, right? It has to be somewhere in the house. So that can just lead to more annoying things like if you wanna move walls, doing things to walls, you might see more ductwork and casements around the house that might just be more frustrating to work around. Another drawback is gonna be, I mentioned the sizes of these lots, anywhere from like just over 0.2 acres to a lot of them are gonna be like 0.2, like a quarter, just over a quarter, not very big. Your backyards aren't gonna be usually very big either. So that can be frustrating if you have a big house, like a four or five bedroom house and multiple kids, and your yard might not be as big as you might want it. On that note, in addition to that, the HOA is about $58 a month. It mostly covers the public areas, the common grounds. And as you drive through the neighborhood, you get that tr those tree-lined streets, all the meticulousness in the common areas. The common areas, the ponds, for example, you do have some maintenance, some ground maintenance in the entire neighborhood, which is about $58, $58 a month. Now, another drawback to living in Cross Estates is that while you're not right up against uh, the Oceania Naval Air Station where the jets fly, you're close enough to where you might hear some. So I'm gonna show you on the ACU's jet noise zone map what I'm talking about. You see, there's Oceana over here. I love this map, by the way. This will help you a lot. If you're planning to move here, use this map. It's the AICUZ ACU's jet noise zone map. So here is uh, the Oceana Naval Air Station and all the flights go around Oceana. Well, I'll show you where Courthouse Estates is. It's right here. So it, the darker colored greens are the uh, places that have the most chance for highest or loud jet noise. So the white areas are where you wouldn't really expect to hear much of anything. Well, Courthouse Estates is not in the white area, but it's also in the light greens. I would expect you hear some. It's enough to where it would be something for me I would be listening for or being aware of before I made a decision just to make sure it's something I'm comfortable with. Another thing I want to mention too is that as these houses were built, as you get earlier into the 90s, you'll find that there is a higher chance for polybutylene piping in your house. What is that? Again, this I've mentioned this before. This is a type of plumbing that was uh, started in the 80s, going into the 90s, and it was known to rupture. And there are a lot of lawsuits with this type of plumbing in between 80s and 90s, as a lot of it was rupturing, a lot of it was replaced. But as you go into, like even through now, some of the uh, plumbing has not been replaced yet. It doesn't mean you have to even replace it. However, there are three different phases of polybutylene piping, phase one, phase two, and phase three. Phase one was the most problematic, and phase two, changed it wasn't as bad as phase one but phase three from what i've heard has been the the best and while it says it's polybutylene pipe it's not nearly the same type of material or or, or product as you might see in a place that has phase one so it does definitely depends on which type you have check with your home inspector to see if you have any if you can find out if you have any remember now that we're in the, late, in the mid to late 90s there's a better chance that if you did have it in your house, it would most likely be phase three, maybe two, as opposed to one. But again, I don't know that for sure. Just check with your home inspector, even if there are polybutylene pipes in the house at all, which there might not be. Now, another drawback to living in Cronus Estates is where it is in relation to the rest of the city in Hampton Roads and Virginia Beach. So if you look on the map again, I see you see where it is. You have the ability to get out. You have different access points out. The problem though is, look at where it is in relation to the rest of the Hampton Roads area in Virginia Beach. It's in the southeastern corner. So it's gonna take you 15 to 20 minutes, at least on good days, to get to interstates, so 64 and 264. So if you don't need to go on the interstate, I mean, you can go through the suburbs and go to all your essentials and you can get to different places in five, 10, 15 minutes. Uh, but if you're going to Norfolk, if you're going to Chesapeake, if you're going to other parts of Chesapeake or even on the, the peninsula, you're going to be driving for a while. I mean, it's, again, to start 15, 20 minutes to get to the other parts of Virginia Beach or even to other cities like Norfolk. So let's say you're inviting someone to your house and they live in Norfolk or somewhere else farther away from, uh, from Virginia Beach. It's going to be more of a hike. It's going to feel a lot farther to drive to your neighborhood. Uh, so that can lead to a little bit more seclusion. It can feel a little bit more separation between you and the rest of the area. You might not feel as connected to the rest of the area for this reason. So I'd say that's a big enough drawback and the reason why I would be concerned if I was living in that part of the area just because of that feeling. So while there are some drawbacks to to me to living in Crown Estates, I think I've changed my tune on it. I used to not like this, this area as much. 
Now I'm only starting to like it more, and I think it's more of a potential good opportunity to me because of the school districts, the, the scarcity of the types of houses that are in these school districts. And also still for the price, I think it's good value. Now that you're seeing more houses get renovated and also uh, have all those systems getting replaced, so you can save a lot of money getting a house like this now, just be careful as to which one it is so you don't find yourself spending a lot more money re renovating or replacing things that you didn't expect to moving in. So if you have any more questions about relocating to Courthouse Estates, Virginia Beach, or through Williamsburg and Hampton Roads, let me know. It's what I do. I love helping people relocate to the area. So if you have any questions, I have my contact information in the description. You can call me, email me, text me, and I'll do whatever I can to help you relocate to the area. And I will see you on the next video.